Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign review, this time covering Xiao Ming. So Xiao Ming's starting settlement is the minor city of Kuaiyang. In the Realm of Chaos campaign, he actually started off with Han Yu Port, but in that campaign, Han Yu Port was not a port, and so wasn't quite as valuable as it is in Immortal Empires, so I imagine they gave you a less important settlement, so that you had to actually earn that much richer settlement in this campaign. Now, most legendary lords in their starting turn are able to capture a good settlement, or at least capture a second settlement in their in their first turn, but uh, Zhao Ming is one of the few legendary lords in the game that's not actually able to capture a settlement on turn one, unless of course you use the movement bug. So there's also no trick start with, uh, with Zhao Ming, since all the other factions in this area are either not worth fighting or not really a threat. The only one being a threat being um, Helmand Gorst. He'll definitely declare war on you at some point in the fairly early campaign. But I just don't think it's worth turning around and dealing with him while all of this rich territory over here is left unclaimed. And especially considering you're in the best position out of any of the legendary lords in the game to deal with Snickich very early. So that's kind of your responsibility to deal with that. Yes, Helmand Gorst will be a problem. But if you put some defenses over here and maybe put a secondary army, you should be able to repel them without too much trouble. Because he'll have... A lot of other enemies including Nurgle. So take out Han Yu Port then get rid of the rats at Zhen Wu, finish off the Dezenta Lords of Jin Shen and then go after Snitch. After you've done that there's really loads of options that you can do. You can cross over the Mountains of Morn, but you're actually in a pretty good position where you can be friends with them due to uh, various things that we'll go through soon. You can improve your relations with ogres. Every now and again they'll probably declare war on you but Cathay is fairly good at dealing with uh, ogre units using uh, a mixed spear line with uh, good arch units can handle their early game units. They don't roll down on you with uh, stone horns on turn 10, so you should be fine. You've also got uh, enemies such as Lockyer Felhart and Nakai the Wanderer in this in this sort of general area in the eastern part of Cathay. Sorting them out will give you access to the eastern shoreline, which will also give you access to the sea lanes over here. So you have a, a good position to just sail across to the to the westernmost part of the map if you want, so you don't even have to um, fight the ogres. You could just leave them under the control of Greasus or whoever takes it. Of course, there's always the possibility that Grimgor Ironhide will pummel everything into the ground in this area. Uh, then let's have a look at Zhao Ming himself. I'd say that as a legendary lord, comparing him to Miao Ying, because they're v very similar in how they function, um, the big thing to consider is like how good they are at being one-man doomstacks. I'd say that Zhao Ming is a better one-man doomstack, but Miao Ying is a better overall legendary lord. And I think the big difference is that his just overall bonuses don't boost his army by as much as what Miao Ying does. But he has Iron Scale, which gives him passive ability regeneration, which Miao Ying doesn't get. And he also gets some extra base damage resistance from this. But let's just go through everything. So... His trait is the Lord of the Jade Sworn, which gives him magic item drop chance plus 100%, so that's good. Through your campaign, you're going to get a lot more items than um, any other Legendary Lord, pretty much. And he reduces the upkeep cost of melee units by 25% in his army. So basically, anything with the with the Yang trait will uh, be reduced in upkeep cost by 25%. Now, Miao Ying reduces the Ying units by 50% upkeep, so she kind of has a better trait, at least in that regard, but she doesn't have uh, the ability to just gain items pretty much from every single battle. Then if we have a look at his unique line over here, Master of Metal reduces the cooldown by 25% of Law of Metal spells. Now he is a mixed caster, he's got mostly Law of Metal, but he also has some Law of Yang spells. Now I don't think the Law of Yang spells are reduced by 25% um, cooldown with that ability. Uh, Winds of Magic cost minus 2, and um, same for the um, Plague of Wrath minus 2, for Final Transmutation upgraded, so that's good. Um, it's a very expensive spell in the first place though. Then you've got Lord of Shang Yang. This is where you get that uh, extra relations with Ogres, so you don't have to go and constantly fight them. And also gives you Diplomatic Relations plus 20 with Cathay. Reducing the upkeep cost by 25% for Ogre Mercenary units is a little bit weird in how that works, since getting Ogre Mercenaries is not really that valuable. So there's two ways to get Ogre Mercenaries, right? You can find an Ogre camp and just recruit an o one Ogre Bull into your army, or you can get an alliance with the Ogres and then just use the alliance recruitment system. All of those units will be 25% cheaper. Don't think that's highly valuable since that's just not going to be a large portion of your army. But it's better than nothing. And if you want to make use of it, go for it. Then you've got Strange Alchemy. Construction cost minus 15% for all buildings, local province, uh, which is okay. 
Hero capacity plus one for alchemist and hero recruit rank plus two for alchemist faction wide. Iron scale, um, passability regeneration. This is the thing that makes him a better melee fighter than uh, Miao Ying. Armor piercing weapon damage plus 30 and armor piercing weapon damage plus 5% for his entire army, which 5% is not huge. Then we've got Master of Alchemy. Now these abilities here are mutually exclusive, and this is this is a bit weird, this stuff here. It's just not super impactful, but it's better than nothing. So you can only use this ability while in human form, and it provides an area of effect boost that provide basically increased damage and magical attacks. So it's, it's not, not too bad, especially with the magical attacks. That's really useful against demons. Um, but... The other version of it that regular alchemists get, they can only cast it on one unit. So the upgraded version, which he has, you can cast it in an effect range of 35 minutes. So that's, that's okay. And then these ones here, they just upgrade this ability here, replaces it with various different effects. So this one here gives flaming attacks as well, in addition to just being more powerful. And this one here provides more armor piercing. And then this one here provides uh, poison. So it just depends on which one you want, but they're mutually exclusive you can only go with one then you've got warding iron over here which is unique to him which provides a a five percent damage resistance in an area of effect so that's pretty good as well um that's pretty much it for his skills he doesn't have any unique items to his to himself no quest battles uh but he can get unique items through his um through the ivory road now if we have a look at his uh, factions trait which i also don't think is quite as strong as what meow ying gets but um he gets maximum cargo capacity plus 20% for caravans, which in the later stages of the campaign, that'll make a lot more money as your caravan masters get better and better. So 20% more money, essentially, as long as it's successful. Um, hero recruit rank plus 5 for alchemist, and you've got 25% reduced upkeep cost for most ogre mercenary units faction-wide. So for Zhao Ming, he's actually got reduced upkeep cost 50% in total if you um, stack both of those on top of each other. But like I said, getting Ogre Mercenaries is not something that's going to be common. So while 50% reduced upkeep cost seems great, it'll only be on one or two units every now and again. And then you've got plus 15 armor for melee units, which, you know, that's all pretty good stuff here. So I'd say that when it comes down to uh, Zhao Ming's campaign, I'd say it's maybe a little bit more interesting than Miao Ying's, but it's definitely a weaker star position than Miao Ying's. So you've got to be on your toes. This is not necessarily the easiest of star positions, nor is it one of the most difficult either. Sort of somewhere in the middle. Uh, no trick start to it. Just go through the motions and uh, straightforward take out the enemy there. Overall, I think it's a fairly good Cathay campaign. Um, you know, I think that the difficulty for uh, optimal enjoyment is probably somewhere like maybe hard or very hard difficulty, but at the end of the day, you should play whatever you're comfortable with. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Xiao Ming's campaign. I uh, appreciate you. Did Don't forget to subscribe, speak? and we'll see you next time. Bye.